Okay, let's start the session now. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this AI 900 session. Myself, Archie Deset. I'm a host for this session. Guys, if you if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will dare to help you out. Now moving ahead and talking about um, event sponsor, that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co-porting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question. We Bruce Rover offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to clients who wish to modernize their framework and we educate, advise, implement, and it and manage. Then the synergetic solution offering that is a persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, and cloud adoption solution. Then what does Microsoft certification does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained, appear for the exam and get certified. This is skilling journey. Here you can advance yourself. First, you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification, then expert level certification. In fundamental certification, we have AZ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900, and SC 900. In associate level certification, we have many types of certification. Here you can see on my screen. Then expert level certification, we have AZ 305, SC 100, PL 600, and AZ 400. Also, guys, we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, and AZ220. If you want any certification, you can connect with us. Then moving ahead, and today training is organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech Community for Pune Kars. Emerging Technology Community for Surat Kars. Azure Tech Community for Nagpur Kars. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app and you can follow our communities there. Then you have to follow Code of Conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note that participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Today's speaker for this training is Smith Shah. He is a Microsoft certified trainer and currently works with Synergetics as a trainer consultant. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to more about the topic and benefit of it. Then we are providing you AI 900 complementary learning achievement badge. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Guys, make sure you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for upcoming uh, updates and upcoming events. Thank you, guys. Now I would like to hand over this mic over speaker. He will continue ahead. Thank you, Aji. So good morning, each and every participant. My name is Smith Shah, and I will be your mentor for today. So before proceeding ahead, just a brief introduction about myself. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, and I've been in the field of data science since the past six years, where I have trained multiple corporate clients like Walmart, uh, Deloitte, LTI Mindtree, and many more. In total, uh, I have trained more than 10,000 uh, students in the field of data science. So yeah, that's uh, just a brief introduction about me. Now let's go ahead and let's start with our webinar for today. In this webinar, you will learn about AI 900, which is a certification course made by Azure. Okay. Uh, basically, AI 900 talks about how you can leverage the AI services that are available on the Azure portal. Fine. So let's go ahead and let's first start by understanding what is AI. So let's go ahead. And let's understand what is AI. So if anybody asks you the definition of AI, what will you say? So guys, AI, or in other words, artificial intelligence, is nothing but a set of tools 
that is used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inferences from data. By inference, I mean insights. So first purpose is to get inferences from data. And second purpose is to get predictions from data. So if anybody asks you the definition of AI, you will say AI is a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inferences from data, or in other words, to get insights from data. And second purpose is to get predictions from data. An example of prediction could be something like this. So for example, let's say based on how it has rained in the year 2023, you want to predict how it will rain in the year 2024. That's an example of prediction. Okay, so AI is a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. How do we do that? How do we get inferences and predictions from data? We do that by using something called a AI model. So how does AI get inferences and predictions from data? It does that by using something called a AI model. Now you might wonder what is an AI model? Well, a AI model is a statistical representation of a real world process. In simple words, we are trying to simulate a real world process using statistics or using mathematics. Let me explain it with the help of a simple example over here. So for example, let's say I have surveyed some of the houses in my locality and I have obtained their data. So I have information about the area of the house in square feet. Then I have information about the price of that house. So let's assume that the first house that I surveyed had an area of 100 square feet and the price was 1 crore. The second house that I surveyed had an area of 200 square feet and the price was 2 crore. Similarly, the third house that I surveyed had an area of 300 square feet and the price was 3 crore. So now, a question for each and every participant over here. Suppose I get information of a fourth house whose area is 400 square feet, but I don't know the price of this house. I want to predict the price of this house. Can anybody in the chat Give me a approximate prediction for the price of this fourth house over here. Can anybody give me the prediction for the price of this fourth house? Abhijit gives a prediction. Abhijit mentions that it could be four crore, right? Even if uh, uh, one another another participant, Ema Emmanuel, right? And then we have Vishal in the chat, right? All of you guys have given the same prediction, four crore. So. Over here, you gave me a prediction, right? That you felt was right. Now, Abhijit, can I say that in order to arrive at this prediction, did you use some mathematics in your head? Yes or no, Abhijit and other students? So all of you gave me prediction, right? In order to arrive at this prediction, you guys use some mathematics in your head, some statistics in your head. That's exactly what an AI model does. A AI model also, tries to use statistics or mathematics to simulate what would happen in the real world. It tries to use statistics or mathematics to simulate what would happen in the real world. Just like you guys over here, try to simulate the real price of the house by using mathematics in your head, by using statistics in your head. A AI model also does the same. The only difference is that here, since the data was simple, you applied very simple mathematics. However, in real world, data is not that simple. So the AI model will have to apply complex mathematics, complex statistics, that's all. Okay, but just like you use statistics to simulate what would happen in the real world. Similarly, a AI model will also try to do the same. Okay, so up till now we have covered two definitions. First definition was what is AI? So we learned that AI is a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. Then second question is, how do we do that? How do we get inferences and predictions from data? We do that by using something called a machine learning model. So the third question is, what is a machine learning? Sorry, not machine learning, my mistake. Let me repeat the definitions. I misspelled a word over here. First, we covered what is AI. So we learned that AI is a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. So the second question that I have in my mind is, how do we get inferences and predictions from data? So the answer is, 
we get it by using something called a AI model. So the third question in my mind is, what is a AI model? Well, a AI model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. In other words, we are trying to simulate a real world process using statistics, using mathematics. Now, there are two important notes that you need to remember before making an AI model. Okay, there are two important notes. First note is that in order for any AI model to work, you need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns. If the data does not have some rows and some columns, you will convert that data in such a way that it has rows and columns. So for example, let's say you're working on image data. Now image does not have rows and columns, right? So you will take the image data, convert it in such a way that you have rows and columns. How to do that? That's a separate topic. But remember this first note that in order for any AI model to work, you need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns. The second important note that you need to remember is that the columns in the data will be of one of the two types. Either a column will be called a feature column or a column will be called a target column. What is the difference between a feature and a target? Let's understand. So guys, feature columns are those columns that help me to predict, whereas a target column is that column that I want to predict. Okay, I repeat, a feature column is that column that will help me to predict, whereas a target column is that column that I want to predict. Let's understand the difference between a feature and a target with the help of an example. So let's suppose I have housing related data. I have surveyed some of the houses in my locality and I have obtained their data. Okay, and here you can see uh, the data in front of your screen. Now the question that I have for you is for each and every participant over here. The question that I am asking is on this data. Can I make a AI model? On this data, can I make a AI model? Can I do it? Theoretically. Can I make an AI model, guys, on this data? What do you feel? Emmanuel has a question that uh, will we get the recording? Yes, the recording will be uploaded on the official YouTube channel of uh, Synergetics. Fine. And yes, uh, you guys uh, were answering my question, right? The question that I asked was that on this data, can we build an AI model? And every one of you, Lakshman, Shri, Abhijit, Kaushal, Manoj, Lori, all of you have given the correct answer that yes, on this data, we can build an AI model, right? How did you arrive at this conclusion? Well, as per the note, in order to make an AI model, we needed to have data having some rows and some columns. And here we do have some columns, some rows, right? So this exactly fits the uh, requirement that we have, right? So as per the requirement, we needed data to have some rows and some columns. We do have that data. So on this data, we can make an AI model. Now, the as per the second note, we know that the columns in the data will be of one of the two types. Either a column will be called a feature column or a column will be called a target column. Feature columns are those columns that help me to predict. Target column is that column that I want to predict. So let's say I want to predict price. If I want to predict price, then guys, price will be which type of column, feature or target? You let me know in the chat. If I want to predict price, then price will be which type of column? Shri has given the correct answer in the chat. Shri mentioned that since I want to predict price, price will be my target column. Even Lakshman and Swanand have mentioned the same, that since I want to predict on the price column, price will be my target column. Perfect. So your price will be your target column. Then do square feet and city help me to predict price? Yes, they do. And since square feet and city columns help me to predict price, that is why they will be called my feature columns. So feature columns are those columns that help me to predict. Target column is that column that I want to predict. Fine. So remember these two notes over here that are mentioned on your screen. Now let's move ahead. Before that, just a quick revision. The first question that we had before starting of our course was, what is AI? We learned that AI is a set of tools used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inferences from data. Second purpose is to get predictions from data. Then second question that arised in our mind was, how do we get inferences and predictions from data? So we said that we get it by using something called an AI model. So the third question that arised in my mind was, what is an AI model? So an AI model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. In other words, 
we are trying to simulate a real world process using statistics or using mathematics. After that, we learned these two important notes over here. First note was that for making any AI model to work, we need some data and that data needs to have some rows and some columns. The second note was that the columns in the data will be of one of the two types. Either a column will be called a feature column or a column will be called a target column. Oh, now let's move ahead. Now guys, it's important to note that there are two main ways to make a AI model. First is using the field of machine learning. Second is using the field of deep learning. OK, without going into the in-depth difference between the two, let me give a simplistic difference between machine learning field and deep learning field. So guys, machine learning field is like using a knife. On the other hand, a deep learning field is like using a machete. So let me ask a question. OK, forget uh, the field of AI for now. Let me ask a general question. Let's say, guys, if you want to cut simple objects like a vegetable, uh, like for example, if you want to cut a potato, or if you, or let's say, you want to cut a simple object like a fruit, let's say apple. So if you want to cut simple objects like a potato or an apple or a lady finger, okay, simple objects like that, what will you use? Will you use a knife or will you use a machete? What will you use? Shri and Swanand and Gauri have given the correct answer. They will use a knife, right? So you are saying on simpler objects, we will use a simple cutting tool, which is knife. Okay, fine. And on the other hand, guys, if you have complex objects, like let's say we have a co coconut, which is complex to cut. In that scenario, what is ideal? Knife is ideal or machete is ideal. If I want to cut complex objects like a coconut, then Swanand mentions in the chat, that in that case, a machete will be ideal. Absolutely. Similarly, guys, if you have complex data, if you have complex data, so something like images, videos, they are complex. Okay, they are complex to convert into rows and columns. Such type of data is complex to convert into rows and columns. On such complex data, it has been observed that it, it is better to use deep learning for better performance. OK, uh, on the other hand, if you have simple data, which is already in the form of rows and columns on that simple data, it's better to use machine learning. So on simple data, it's better to use machine learning on complex data. It is better to use deep learning. OK, theoretically on any data, you can use any field of AI. Uh, even on simple data, I can use machine learning field. Even on simple data, I can use deep learning field. Similarly, on complex data, theoretically, I can use machine learning field. On complex data, theoretically, I can use deep learning field. Okay. Theoretically, I can use any field of, on any type of data. It's just that it has been observed that on complex data, if you use deep learning, it gives you more performance. Okay. Uh, OK, you might wonder why to not use deep learning on simple data. The answer is very easy, guys. So let me ask you a general question. Forget AI, forget the field of AI, a general question. So uh, let me ask it to uh, Gauri. So Gauri, uh, when I ask you a question, right, that in order to cut a simple object like a apple or a potato, what will you choose out of knife and a machete? You gave the correct answer. You will use a knife. But Gauri, why did you choose a knife? What were the reasons behind choosing a knife? Can you give me the reasons behind choosing a knife? What were the reasons? Why did you give that answer? You gave the correct answer, Gauri. But why did you give the answer? Even other students can come in. So when I told you that if I want to cut a simple object like a potato or apple, what will I use? A knife or a machete? You give the correct answer, knife. Ha. Huh. So uh, Lakshman gives one reason. Lakshman says easy handling. OK, so you are saying Lakshman that knife is easy to handle. A machete is complex. Absolutely. Similarly, guys, making a machine learning model is simple. So one reason is that it is simple to create. OK, just like in order to handle a knife, it's very simple. Whereas in order to handle a machete, it, it will be a little complex for us. Not every person can handle a machete effectively. Right. So you gave the correct answer, Lakshman. Similarly, Lakshman, 
a machine learning model is simple to make. Okay. So if you are an AI developer and you have two options with you, either to make a machine learning model or a deep learning model. In deep learning model, you will have more complexities. Okay. Whereas a machine learning model is very simple to make. So one reason is that Lakshman that you gave me. That okay, just like a knife is simple to handle. Similarly, machine learning models are simple to handle or simple to make. Okay. Any other reason? Any other reason? Yes, good morning, Deepa. Any other reason, guys? Why would you choose a knife? Why would you choose a knife? Any other reason? Ha, simplicity, as Gauri and uh, Lakshman mentioned, is one. So simplicity is one. Second reason, can I say, could be cost? Cost, guys. So let's say, uh, let's say I'm going to, uh, I've bought a house. Now I want to make sure that I have all the tools in my kitchen. Okay. So what I will do if I, let's say, if I daily, uh, I'm going to cut things like potato, apple, what will I do? I'll go to the market and I'll bring a knife. Why will I not bring a machete? Obviously, first reason is that knife is simple to handle. Second reason is cost as well. So knife is less costly as compared to machete. Similarly, guys, the computation involved in a machine learning model is less because of which machine learning model will cost you less. Okay. It will cost you less. The, the cost is less. Okay. As compared to a deep learning model where there are more mathematical computations involved. So in deep learning, the cost is higher. Okay. So remember this, that machine learning models are simpler to make and they cost less. Whereas deep learning models are complex to make and they cost more. But the benefit of deep learning is that always it will give you a better performance as compared to machine learning. Always. A deep learning model will give you better performance than machine learning at any time on any data. Okay. Is this that machine learning is simple to use and it costs less? So, so it's still being used in the AI field. Okay. Fine. So remember that in order to create an AI model, you have two approaches. You can either use the field of machine learning or you can uh, use the field of deep learning. Okay. I'm not going into the uh, uh, in depth difference between the two because it will take hours and hours to explain the difference. Okay. And we have to move ahead with the uh, webinar. So I've just given a simplistic difference between the two. That on simple data, use machine learning. On complex data, use deep learning. Complex data such as images and videos, use deep learning. And, or, and on any given time, deep learning will give you better performance than machine learning. So you might ask me why to not why to use machine learning at all? Well, you're right in terms of performance, deep learning is better, but machine learning is easy to make, then it costs you less. So for these two reasons, people still use machine learning. Okay. Anyways, now let's go ahead. Now let's understand the different types of AI models. We have understood the ways to create an AI model, but what are the different types of AI models? So there are many different types in the market. After every six months, a new type comes into the market. Okay, but we will look into two main types only because 95% of the work that is done in the AI industry is done on these two types. Okay, uh, so remember there are many types of AI models. There are many types of AI models. However, we'll look into two types only. Okay, remember the there are many types after every six months, a new type comes into the market. However, we'll look into two types only because 95% of the work that is done in the AI industry is done on these two types. And uh, in the AI 900 certification exam, uh, these two types are being talked about. So let's go ahead and let's study them. So first type is supervised machine learning. So first type is supervised learning model. Second type is unsupervised learning model. So there are many types of AI models. However, we are studying two types. First type is supervised learning model. Second type is unsupervised learning model. So what is the difference between the two? Well, in case of a supervised learning model, the data that I'm using has features and target code. Whereas in case of a unsupervised learning model, the data that I'm using only has features. It does not have target. I repeat, in case of a supervised learning model, the data that I'm using has features and target both. Whereas suppose in case you have a data in which you only have features present. Let's say target is not present with you. You only have features present. In that case, you will use unsupervised learning model. 
Okay. So remember, there are many types of AI models. After every six months, a new type comes into the market. However, 95% of the work done in the AI industry is done on these two types that are mentioned on your screen. First type is supervised learning model. Second type is unsupervised learning model. What is the difference between the two? In supervised learning model, the data that I'm using has features and target both. In unsupervised learning model, the data that I'm using only has features. It does not have target. Okay, now let's go ahead. Now guys, supervised learning models are further divided into two types. First is classification model. Second is regression model. Okay, so what is the difference between the two? Well, in case of a classification model, my target column has finite set of possibilities. Whereas in case of a regression model, my target column has infinite set of possibilities. Let's understand the difference between classification and regression with the help of an example. So let's suppose, guys, I have a column with me called dice roll. And what I'm doing is I'm playing the game of dice with my friends. And whatever value I get on the dice, I'm storing it in this column. So let's say when I first roll the dice, I get the value 4. So I've written 4. Then again, when I roll the dice, I get the value 1. So I've written 1. Then again, when I roll the dice, I get the value 6. So I've written 6 and so on. So now I have a question. Let me ask that question to, let's say, uh, huh, before I go ahead, uh, uh, Sri has a question over here in the chat. Let me answer that. So Sri mentions that I gave you two reasons to prefer machine learning over deep learning, right? I said that deep learning, so sorry, first reason is machine learning is simple to make. So as a developer, it's very simple for you to make. Second reason I said was cost. So Sri, when I say cost, what I mean is in machine learning, there are less mathematical computations involved. The algorithm that will be used for implementing machine learning model, it will have less mathematical computations. Because of which, can I say the uh, uh, CPU will work less? If the CPU works less, the cost will be less. See, what happens is usually this field of AI, we do it on cloud, okay? Because uh, many a times our local laptops are not uh, able to handle the load. So what we do is most of the companies, they do, do this on cloud. Okay, they do this on some cloud platform, whether it could be Azure cloud platform, it could be AWS cloud platform or any cloud platform. Most of uh, the people in the market uh, build their AI models on cloud, whether it's a machine learning model or a deep learning model. Now, when it's deployed on cloud, when you're making it in cloud, you will be, co uh, you will be charged for everything that you do, right? For every storage that you use, for every CPU computation, uh, that is involved, you will be charged for everything. So let's say you're making a machine learning model on one data and on the same data, you're making a deep learning model. You will see on the same data, a machine learning model will have less computations involved because of which the uh, CPU that will be used from cloud will be less. If the CPU that is used is less, then the cost that you will have to incur will also be less. Okay. On the other hand, on the same data, Deep learning tries to do more computations because of which the performance is good. Performance is definitely good because it has more mathematical computations. But the downside is that since it has more mathematical computations, the CPU that is used from cloud is more. And because of that, the cost that I have to incur is also more. Okay. So I hope that cost factor is clear with the help of this example. If not, let me know. Huh, as Lakshman mentioned, we need higher CPU power in order to do, perform machine learning model as compared to deep, uh, sorry, my mistake. We need higher computation power for deep learning as compared to machine learning. Machine learning computation is less. So if you're doing it on cloud, if the computation is less, cost will be less. Okay, fine. Let's go ahead and let's uh, talk about this slide over here. So as I mentioned, we were talking about the types of AI models. There are many, many types of AI models. After every six months, a new type comes into the market. However, 95% of the work that is done in the AI industry is done on these two types. First type is supervised learning model. Second type is unsupervised learning model. So what is the difference between the two? Let's go ahead. So the difference between supervised and unsupervised is that in case of a supervised learning model, the data that I'm using has features and target both. 
whereas in case of a unsupervised learning model the data that i am using only has features it does not have target then supervised learning models are further divided into two types only first type is classification model second type is regression model what is the difference between the two well in case of a classification model the target column has finite set of possibilities whereas on the other hand if in your if your target column has infinite set of possibilities then it will be called a regression model okay so it depends on the nature of the target column if your target column has finite set of possibilities the model will be called a classification model if your target column has infinite set of possibilities your model will be called a regression model now let's go ahead so suppose guys i have a column with me called dice roll and what i am doing is i am playing the game of dice with my friends and whatever value i get after rolling the dice i am storing it in this column so let's say when i first roll the dice i get the value 4 so i have written 4 then again when i roll the dice i get the value 1 so i have written 1 then again when i roll the dice i get the value 6 so i have written 6 and so on so now i have a question for each and every one of you in this column called dice roll how many possibilities i have so when you roll a dice how many possible values you can have when you roll a dice how many possible values you can get anyone six right as shri mentions in the chat i have six possibilities when i roll the dice i can either get the value 1 2 3 4 5 6 <laughs> apart from these six possibilities i don't have anything else right even abhijit and lakshman and gauri have mentioned the same that as far as dice roll is concerned i have six possibilities okay so that means over here this column has finite set of possibilities and if this column is your target column and if in your target column you have finite set of possibilities then your model will be called a classification okay let me take another example so let's say uh, i have a column with me called uh, gender let's say i have a column called gender okay and what i am doing is i am storing the gender value of every participant in this webinar so let's say the first participant that joined the meeting today had a gender of male the next participant that joined the meeting had a gender of male as well the third participant that joined the meeting had a gender of female and so on okay so now you tell me guys in the gender column how many possible uh, values i can have so i mean if i uh, take the gender of a participant in this class then how many possible gender values i will have two right either male or female so that means in gender column i have finite set of possibilities and if this gender column is your target column and if your target column has finite set of possibilities then your model will be called a classification model let me take one more example suppose i have a column like stock price and what i am doing is i am storing the value of stock that i have bought on each day so let's say on the first day when i bought the stock the price was 100 rupees after that it was 99.781 rupees after that it was 100.2 rupees and so on so now you tell me guys as far as stock price is concerned do i have finite set of possibilities or infinite set of possibilities anand has given the correct answer in the chat anand mentioned that as far as stock price is concerned i have infinite set of possibilities even shri and dipali have mentioned the same in the chat that as far as stock price is concerned i have infinite set of possibilities if let's say this stock price column is my target column and if my target column has infinite set of possibilities then the model will be called a regression model and over your roshan has mentioned the same that since this column is my target column and in this target column i have infinite set of possibilities the model will be called a regression fine so i hope the types of ai models are clear to you so if anybody asks you what are the types of ai models you will say there are many many types after every 6 months a new type comes into the market but 95% of the work in the ai industry is done on these two types first is supervised learning model second is unsupervised learning model okay fine right. the difference between supervised and unsupervised you know right in supervised learning model the data that i am using has features and target both in unsupervised learning model the data that i am using only has features it does not have target then supervised learning models are further divided into two types classification and regression 
if your target column has finite set of possibilities it will be called a classification model if your target column has infinite set of possibilities it will be called a regression model. okay with this the basics of ai i hope uh, uh, is clear to everyone if there is any doubt in the theory that we just learned uh, do let me know okay so this was just to give you an overview of ai so if anybody asks you what is ai uh, what are the types of uh, in order to do ai what do you need okay so all of that overview we have just covered okay anyways let's dive into the main part of the webinar for today so in the webinar for today we will look at the various ai services that azure offers so azure has already created some ai models for us and they have divided those ai models into different different categories so to be specific they have divided those ai models into eight categories okay so your azure has already created ai models for us we don't need to create ai models azure has already created it for us okay so in this webinar we'll be seeing that how we can use the ai models that azure has created so the ai models that azure has created has been divided into eight categories so let's talk about each category one by one let's start with document intelligence category so uh, let's suppose guys that uh, you are working in a company and you receive invoice after every month okay so for example i uh, get invoice after every month for my com from my company and it has a mention of what compensation i will get for that month okay and so on that okay what will be the tax uh, amount uh, that will that is included and all of that so all of those details are mentioned in that invoice now i have a habit guys that what i do is i keep a track of my compensation that i'm getting for, uh, for every month in a excel sheet so what i do is i uh, manually go through that invoice and whatever is the com compensation amount i uh, take that compensation amount and mention it in my excel sheet okay so i will say that okay for march 2024 i got this much amount uh, and this was the tax for april 2024 this was the amount that i got this was the tax and so on but the thing is i do this manually what if i want to do this automatically let's say i want azure to scan my invoice and based on the document that is uh, that it is scanning based on the invoice that it is scanning i want it to get information out of that invoice and that information i want it to put it into a excel sheet i want to do this automatically i don't want to do it manually well i can use the help of this service called document intelligence service it will what it will do it will scan any document that you want and it will take information out of it and put it into the format of your choice okay we will see how to work with this service today so don't worry then second is language service so let's say you want to build chatbots okay so let's say guys that uh, for example let me show you an example let me go to this website called lg.com okay and here you will see in lg.com they have a chatbot uh, included in their website okay here you can see it. we have a chatbot okay so for example i can chat with it i can say hi hello i will say that okay i want to buy a ac and all of that okay so over here you can see there is a chatbot okay i will say hi okay and you can see i'm able to chat with this chatbot but in order to create this chatbot uh, maybe some coding knowledge would have been required right what if you do not have coding knowledge and you have a website and you want to integrate that chatbot that uh, you know does conversation back and forth in that case what you can do is you can use this service called language service so your you uh, do not need to create the chatbot yourself all you will do is you will just specify how what is the type of chatbot that you need and in which website you want to integrate it okay and azure will do the work for you okay so for non technical people if you want to create a chatbot this is the best service and uh, uh, if i get time we will see this i am not sure we'll, whether we'll get the time to see to to cover this lab if we if we get the time we'll definitely see this lab today okay fine then coming on to the next category of uh, ai service which is vision category so let's suppose you have images and videos and you want to perform analysis over them 
So let's say I have a video and in that video, I want to find out what all people were involved in the video. Uh, I want to automatically generate captions. I want to automatically generate tags. OK, uh, and so on. And I want to automatically figure out what all places were mentioned in the video that in the video, let's say the video was shot in Switzerland. So. I want to know that, OK, uh, what all the what all in which which places uh, the uh, vi video was shot at and so on. OK, I want to perform analysis on images, videos. If you want to do that, then you can use this category of service called vision category. Then coming to the next category, which is speech category. OK, so let's say uh, uh, we have uh, our prime minister uh, uh, Narendra Modi and we have uh, uh, the president of uh, Russia. Uh, let's say Putin. OK, and they are doing, a, uh, let's say, a bilateral meeting. And if you have observed what happens is uh, Putin speaks in uh, Russia. OK, and uh, in order to understand what he is speaking in Russia, uh, we have uh, a Prime Minister Modi who uh, puts a ear plug in his ear, right? And what happens in that ear plug is uh, the translator tries to translate what, what Putin is speaking. And uh, then through that translation, Modi tries to understand. Similarly, vice versa, let's say Modi would speak in Hindi and what Putin will do is, is he'll have a ear plug in his ear and uh, some translator will translate Modi's speech uh, from Hindi to Russian and that is how uh, Putin understands. So what if you want to remove that translator's job? You want to do this translation automatically. You want to remove that translator's job because that translator can do mistakes sometimes, right? You want to remove that translator job altogether. You want to do this speech translation uh, automatically. Well, you can use this category of service called Azure AI speech. Okay, fine. Coming on to the next category, which is Azure AI translator. So let's say uh, we have Roshan who has written a book. Okay, Roshan has published a book in English. Now what he wants to do is in, in order to increase his sales, he wants to translate the book in different, different languages. He wants to translate it into French language, into Tamil language, into Marathi language and so on. OK, so what Roshan could do is he could hire a translator uh, who will translate uh, the text in the book for him. But the uh, danger that Roshan will have to go through is maybe the translator uh, could do some mistakes. He could not be good enough, right? And maybe the translator will take too much of time. So what if Roshan wants to uh, not waste on time? He wants to make sure that the translation is very accurate. In that case, Roshan can go to this category of service called Azure AI Translator. And what will happen is whatever text you want to uh, translate from one language to another, it, it will happen. OK, then uh, let's move on to another category of AI service called content safety. So let's suppose we have uh, Deepali with us. Uh, Dipali, let's assume, has a YouTube channel. Okay, let's assume that Dipali has a YouTube channel and uh, Dipali does a live uh, educational uh, videos on her YouTube channel. Now, what Dipali wants to do is she wants to make sure that in the live video, let's say if uh, people are putting some comments, those comments are appropriate. There are there are no inappropriate comments. There are no bad words in the uh, uh, chat section. Dipali wants to ensure that. OK, now what Dipali could do is Dipali could hire a chat moderator, right? You would have observed if you observe some of the live uh, videos on YouTube, they most of the uh, creators, YouTube creators hire a chat moderator, right? And that chat moderator manually goes through each and every comment and sees that, OK, uh, if there's some inappropriate thing or not, if there's some inappropriate thing, they will de delete the comment. But what if? Dipali wants to do this automatically. She doesn't want to hire a, a chat moderator. OK, uh, Dipali wants to do this automatically. Well, Dipali could integrate a content safety uh, AI service of Azure and then content safety AI service will do that job for her. Content safety AI service will make sure that whatever content is being uh, put out is appropriate. There are no bad words. There is no sensitive information being put out over there and so on. OK. Now let's go ahead. Let's move on to another category, which is Azure AI search. Now, what does this do? So guys, uh, what it does is uh, let's say if you pass any image uh, to this service, if you pass any 
uh, let's say if you pass any uh, image to this service or if you pass any uh, PDF to this service or if you pass any, uh, let's say, text document to this service. OK, what it will do is it will find out anything that you want. OK, you might wonder that, OK, for working on uh, images, I already have vision service, right? And I can uh, perform analysis over images and it will give me things like image caption, image tags and so on. Yes, correct. Then you might say that, OK, in order to work with PDF documents, we have this uh, document intelligence service that will scan the PDF document and it will give me the things that I'm asking for. Yes, you are right. Then you might say that uh, in order to work with text document, we have translator service. OK, that will do the translator job for us and uh, it will tell me that, OK, what is the language of the original text okay and it will say that okay original text is english and so on all of that analysis you can do so you might wonder why to use search service well the thing is in translator service in vision service in document intelligence service everything is predefined okay for example in document intelligence service it will give you uh, information about the total amount in the invoice it will give you information about the address mentioned in the invoice. It will give you information about uh, which party created the invoice, right? And all of that. Everything is predefined. Similarly, in vision service also, everything is predefined. Let's say you want some custom information out of that service. You can't get it. Similarly, from translator service, everything is predefined. Okay. Whereas the thing with search services, let's say you want to search on any data. It could be in any format. Yes, here you will have some predefined fields involved. Uh, automatically, it will uh, make sure to uh, get the tags based on the content. Automatically, it will make sure uh, to get uh, the language mentioned in the content and so on. Automatically, it will uh, detect the sentiment mentioned in the content and so on. It will do that, but you have the option to search for custom fields as well. That option was not available in translator service, in document intelligence service, in vision service. So in Azure AI search, you can search through any type of data. It could be images, it could be uh, PDF documents, it could be text document. It's just that here you will get an extra option to search for customized fields. Okay, fine. And if we get time, I'll show you how this works. Then. Coming to our last category of service, which is OpenAI category. OK, so uh, you guys would know that OpenAI as a company uh, which has developed chat GPT, right? So OpenAI as a company has tied up with Azure. So all the models that OpenAI makes, they make it available on Azure platform as well. So if you want to use any of those OpenAI models, you can use it on the Azure platform using this category of service called OpenAI category. OK. So these are the eight category of services that Azure offers. So Azure has already created AI models for us. All we have to do is just use them. We don't have to create AI models. All we have to do is just use them. OK. Uh, and those AI models, they have divided into eight categories. So I hope these eight categories are clear to you. If there is any doubt, please let me know. Now let's move forward, guys. Let's move forward. So let's start with uh, our first lab. And let's take let's do something interesting. Now, before I show you any of the labs, remember that when we'll perform the labs, we will get errors because of traffic. Since these AI services are created by Azure in recent times, uh, what the current problem that everybody is suffering from is traffic. So let's see if there is too much traffic on that service, then you will get errors while using it. OK, so. I will try to perform the labs wherein we'll try to use each service. But remember that while using it, we'll get some errors. And that error is not because we are doing something wrong. That error is because uh, there is a lot of traffic on to the Azure service. And because of that, you will get error. For example, it will throw you a authorization error. It will say that no, you are not authorized to use this service. OK, it's not that you are not authorized. You are authorized, but still it will throw you that error. Why? just because of traffic related issues. So I hope today we don't get any traffic related issues. If we get what we'll have to do is we might have to wait for 30 minutes to one hour for the traffic to cool down. And then the same approach that we applied earlier, uh, the same approach would have worked. OK, so just a note that going forward, we will get uh, we could get issues. OK, on some days we do get these traffic related issues. 
fine. I hope today we don't get. But even if we do get those traffic related issues, not a worry. We might have to wait for half an hour or so. After that, the traffic will cool down and uh, we'll be able to use the service. Okay. So uh, by the end of this session, we'll be able to use the services. Not an issue. Is that if we get a traffic related issue, we might have to wait for half an hour or so. Okay. Anyways, let's move forward. So what I will do first is I will start with my let's take a service in the middle. Let's start with speech service. So what I will do is I will try to convert my speech from English language to any other language of my choice. OK, so let's see how to perform this lab over here. So what I will do is I'll go to file explorer and I'll create a new folder. Let me call it. Webinar. June. AI 900. And what I will do is I will just go ahead and open this folder in Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code is a platform where we can write code in any programming language. Uh, the programming language that I will be using will be Python programming language, but you can write code in any programming language. OK. In order to use uh, AI services, you can either write code in Python programming language or C sharp. These are the two options available. OK, so out of these two options, you can use any one. I will be using Python as Python is easy for me. OK, fine. Now let's go ahead. So let's create a new folder. Let's call it lab one. OK, lab one. Speech. Translator. OK, and within this I will create a coding file. Uh, and in that coding file, I'll write code in Python programming language. So let me just call it test.py. OK, so I've created a Python file and in this Python file, I will write code in Python programming language. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and use this service called Azure AI speech. So let's see how to do it. So what I will do is uh, I'll go to the Azure portal. I will search for Azure AI services. I'll click on the first option that pops up in the search result. And now what I will do is I want to use the speech service. So in Azure, if you want to use any service, forget any AI service, there are other services also that Azure offers, right? For example, SQL service, MongoDB service, then storage account service. There are many countless services that Azure offers. So if you want to use any service in Azure, you have to use it as a resource. So you have to first create a resource of that service. OK, first you have to create a resource of that service. So in order to use the service, you have to create a resource of that service. Then through that resource, you will be able to use the service that you want. Fine, so let's do it. So let's say I want to use my speed service. So I'll create a resource of speed service. So let me go to this section called speed service over here. I'll click on this option called speed service. And when I do that, I do get uh, a option to create a resource of the speech service. So let me click on the create button over here. And when I do that, I'm redirected to a form that I have to fill. Once I fill the details in the form, I will be able to create a resource of the speech service. So the first field in the form is asking me to select subscription. Remember that in one Azure account, you can have multiple subscriptions. So for example, I have this MSDN subscription. In MSDN subscription, let's say I have around 7,300 rupees left. I could have a different subscription as well. OK, let's say subscription two, wherein let's say I have only 30 rupees left and so on. So in one account, you can have countless, countless subscriptions. OK, in different subscription, you will have different amount left. OK, depending on what amount you have uh, uploaded from your debit card or credit card. Fine. So what you have to do is you have to choose a subscription of your choice that has enough uh, uh, money in it. OK, because whenever we'll be using any service of Azure, it will charge us something. So we have to make sure that there is enough money left. OK, in our subscription so that we don't get any issues while using the service. So make sure to choose a subscription of your choice that has enough money in it left. Now in my scenario, I have only one active subscription. Previously, I had more than one subscriptions in my account. But uh, uh, those remaining subscriptions got uh, deactivated. Okay. Currently, I have only one active subscription with me, which is this MSDN subscription. So let me select it. Okay. 
fine. Remember that if you have more than one subscription, choose the subscription of your choice that has enough money in it. Then next field in the form is asking me to select a resource group. Remember, we are creating a resource of speech service. So that resource has to fall within some of the other resource group. Any resource that you create in Azure of any service, not just any AI service, you create a res resource of any service in Azure, it has to fall within some of the other resource group. Okay. There are many benefits of doing that. Uh, so let me show you one benefit. So let's say I'm creating a project. I'm working on a project in my office and for that project, let's say I've created total 20 resources. OK, let's say I created a resource of speech service. Then I created a resource of language service. Then I created a resource of SQL service and so on. So let's say total. Uh, 20 resources I have created. OK. Now let's say uh, those 20 resources I created fine. I have created them, but now that project has expired. That project in which I was working on in my office has expired. So now these 20 resources are of no use to me. So what will I do? Will I delete those 20 resources one by one individually? Well, deleting them one by one individually could take a lot of time. So instead, why don't we put these 20 resources inside one resource group? And when the time for deletion comes, we can delete the entire resource group altogether. With that, if you delete the resource group altogether, all the resources within that resource group will get deleted in one go. So first benefit of resource group is life cycle management. That if the resources have the same life cycle, if you know that, OK, these resources uh, will not be of any use to you after, let's say, six months. OK, they have the same life cycle span that after six months, uh, they will be of no use to you. Then it's better to put the resources within the same resource. Group. So first is life cycle management. What is the second benefit? There are more benefits. Let's look at the second one. So second benefit is uh, cost analysis. OK, cost analysis. So let's say uh, you have a project in your office and for that project. You created 20 resources. OK, you created first resource of let's say speed service, second resource of let's say language service and so on like that. You created 20 resources and now you want to find out the total cost incurred by your project. So what will you do? One approach could be that you go into each resource one by one. See the cost that OK for the first resource. The cost was let's say 100 rupees. OK, uh, for the second resource, the cost was let's say 21 rupees. And so on like that, you can find the cost for each resource individually. And at the end, what you will do is you will take the sum of each cost that was incurred. That is one approach, but that could be very tedious. Instead of that, why don't we do one thing? Why don't we put these two resources that belong to same project inside the same resource group? And if I want to see the cumulative cost, of all the resources in that resource group, I can do it with a single click of that button. I can just go to that resource group that I've created and at the top there will be a button to see the cumulative cost of all the resources in that resource group. The second benefit of resource group is cost analysis. First benefit was life cycle management. Second benefit is cost analysis like that. There are many, many benefits. We won't dive into that, uh, but remember that uh, whatever resource you create in Azure has to fall within some of the other resource. Group. OK, fine. So here you can either select an existing resource group or you can create a new one. Here, let me go ahead and let me create a new one. I'll say webinar RG. In other words, a webinar resource group. After that, it is asking me to select a region for my resource. Make sure to choose a region that is closer to your user. Let's say you're creating this resource for a user in the United States. So choose a region that is closer to United States just for better latency. OK. Uh, let's say if the region is uh, far away from the user, then in order to access that resource, uh, it will take slightly higher time. Although that difference will just be in milliseconds, but still, okay. But if you have a region that is closer to your user, that user will be able to access the resource faster. Okay. So make sure that you choose a region that is closer to your user just for better latency. Here I will keep it default. The region over here I will keep it default to East US only. After that, let me go ahead and next it is asking me to mention the name for my resource. So let's give it a name. Uh, I'll give it a name over here called. Uh, webinar. Speech resource. Oh, fine. 
make sure to put a, a unique name over here. So let's say, for example, if I put in this name called test, okay, uh, you can see it gives me an error saying that this name has already been used by someone. So put a valid name out here. Fine. So I'm just putting a valid, uh, a, a unique name called uh, webinar speech resource. Okay, this name was unique, so it accepted it. After that, it is asking me to select the pricing tier. Okay, so let me select it. Here I have two options, free and standard. Uh, if I select the free one, it will have certain limitations in them. So to not have any limitations, I'm choosing the standard tier. With that, some cost will be deducted, but that's fine for me. Okay, after that, let's go ahead. And all the other settings like network related settings, identity related settings, tag related settings, I want to keep it default. I directly want to jump to review plus create. So let me directly jump to review plus create by clicking on this button called review plus create. I'll directly jump to that page. And what Azure will do is it will run a validation in the backend just to check whether it can give me the things that I'm asking for. You can see that validation was successful because of which the create button has now been enabled. Let me click on the create button. And with that, what will happen is a resource of the speech service will be created for me. We'll have to wait for uh, 30 seconds or one minute at max. And after that, the resource of the speech service will be created for us. Once it's created, we will see how to use it. OK, so let's wait for uh, a minute or so. And within a minute, the resource of the speech service will be created. And here you can see it has been created. So we'll go to the resource now just to check if it has been created correctly. Yes, okay. we are able to go to the resource. Now, now that we have created a resource of the speech service, let's go ahead and let's try to use the resource that we have created. In order to use it, what all things I will need? Let's go ahead and let's mention it. One second, I'm not able to open my Visual Studio code. Why am I not able to open? Okay. Uh, I'm not able to open it up for some reason. Okay, I don't know what is the issue. Let me open it up again. Okay, if I minimize, am I able to open it up? No. Okay, fine. As Anand mentions, I'll have to do one thing. I'll have to uh, close the Visual Studio window and I'll have to start again. Fine, let's do it. Okay, I'll do one thing. Uh, okay, I'll try. Let me see. Take this approach. Let me end this. OK, I got a pop up. OK, it has been ended. Fine, now let me open it up again. OK, fine. So now, guys, let's go ahead. And uh, before going ahead, uh, let us take a small uh, uh, break of uh, five minutes or seven minutes. OK, and after that, we'll come back and we'll try to use the resource of the speech service. I guess uh, let's take a short break and after that, we'll come back. Is it fine? Up till now, whatever we did, did it make sense, guys? Yes. I'll do one thing. Meanwhile, in the break, I'll try to restart my laptop so that these issues do not exist. OK, whatever we did today made sense, right? So okay, fine. So let's take a short break. Let's start the timer. And after the break, we'll come back. OK, meanwhile, I'll just make sure that uh, uh, I restart my laptop. So let me put a message in the chat. That break. Yeah. 
Okay. So I'll just come back in five to six minutes. After that, we'll start. Till then, I'll just be on.
All right, welcome back to the session, guys. Hope all of you can hear me clearly and the screen is visible to you. Now, let's move ahead. So, as I mentioned, I just restarted my laptop just uh, to make sure that the issue that I had had previously does not exist. OK, let's move ahead. So what did we do just before we took a break? We created a resource of speech service and now I'm trying to use the resource. In order to use the resource, I will need two things. First, I will need to mention the key in order to use the resource. In order to uh, get the key, you can see in the overview section, uh, you have information about the key. OK, another way to get access to it is you can go directly to keys and endpoint section. You can see it's present in the left side of your screen. Keys and endpoint section. If I click on that, even there I will get again access to the keys. Now keys are important. Only if I mention the key of the resource, only then I'll gain access to the resource. OK, so let's say I'm trying to gain access to the resource outside of the Azure portal from outside the Azure portal. I will have to mention the uh, key of the resource. Only then then I will gain access to it. So let me show you the keys. There are two keys that are present over here. Just like for our house, we can have two keys, right? One will be our main key. Second will be our backup key. Similarly, or we have two keys. You can use any one of them. Just like for your house, if you have two keys, you can use any one. Both of them work, right? Similarly, or you have two keys. You can use any one out of those two keys. Right. Let me copy one of the key over here. And what I'll do is I'll paste it in my code. I'll just say that the key of my resource is so and so. Sorry, my mistake. I should mention that code over here in the coding file. I'll say key of my resource is so and so. All right, let's go ahead. The second thing that I need is I will need to mention the region in which I have created the resource. So I've created the resource in East US region. So I'll just have to go ahead and mention that as well. So I will say the region in which the resource lies is East US. OK, fine. Now let's go ahead. Once I have these two things, I will be able to gain access to the resource. OK, fine. Now let's go ahead and let's see how to do it. So what I will do is uh, first in order to gain access to it, I will need help of a class which I will try to import. OK, so let me do that. So I will say from Azure folder. There is a subfolder called cognitive services. Inside that subfolder, I have another subfolder called speech. Let me reference that subfolder as speech SDK. Now what I will do is inside that subfolder called speech, which I have referenced as speech SDK inside that subfolder, I have a file called uh, translation. And inside that file, I have a Python class called speech translation config speech translation config. What this class will do, it will allow me to gain access to the resource of speech service. So let's gain access to the resource of speech service that we have created. So I will have to pass two things to this class. First is the key of my resource and second is the region in which the resource lies. So let me pass these two things. Once I pass these two things, I will gain access to the resource. So in the next line, I will just print this message to the user saying that access granted. OK, so in this line of code, the one that I have written on line six, if there is uh, no issues, then the compiler will move on to the next line and it will print saying that access has been granted. Let me go ahead and let me uh, run the code just to check whether access has been granted or not. Once I gain access to the resource, then I will move forward. Let me run the coding file. Here it is asking me to select a Python interpreter. I'll select an interpreter of 3.11 version. Fine, and then it will try to run the code. Fine, okay, interpreter has been selected. Now let me run the code over here. So what I will do is, uh, there are two ways to run it. I can again click on the run button and it will run it, run it for me. Uh, there is a second approach. Uh, we know that this code I've written it in test.py, which is present inside this folder called lab1. So I will try to open lab one in my terminal lab one folder in my terminal. When I do that, you can see in the terminal now. Uh, it is pointing to the lab one folder and I will say inside the lab one folder. I want to run the Python file called test.py. OK, and you can see it ran and uh, because I did not did not have any error in this line. 
uh, which suggests that access has been granted and the same has been printed over here in the terminal. Fine, so I've gained access to the resource of the speech service. Now what I will do is let me proceed ahead and let me show you how using the resource you can perform speech translation. So first I will just mention that I will pass on my speech to the Azure portal. Okay, so my original speech that I will be saying will be in English language. So let me mention it to the resource that the original speech will be in English language. So don't get confused. Okay, so don't get confused. If I'm speaking something, it will be in English language only. Okay, so fine because of my accent, it can get confused. So I'm directly specifying it. That don't don't get confused. Whatever I'll be speaking will be in English language, but that resource will have to translate it to other language. So in which language it had, it will translate? So I will say translate it in four languages. Translate it in four languages. So my first language that I might want to translate it would be uh, French. So my first language would be French. So I will write the code for it, which is FR. Okay. Uh, the second language in which I want uh, my speech to translate it to could be Spanish. So I will write the code for it, which is ES. The third language in which I want my uh, speech to be translated into could be Hindi. So what I will do is I'll just write the uh, code for Hindi, which is HI. Okay. The fourth language that I might want to uh, translate this into could be a uh, Kannad language. So I will write the code for it, which is KN. Okay, now let's go ahead. And what I will do is uh, now uh, I will have to specify more settings with respect to my speech. And in order to specify more settings, I'll have to do one thing later on. Fine, so let me do that thing right now as uh, only that. Okay, I will have to uh, or specify more settings. So settings with respect to what? So first I will have to specify that uh, my original speech will be uh, recorded from which microphone. So I will say that, okay, take my default microphone and from there record my speech. Okay, so first is microphone related setting. Okay, first is microphone related setting. Uh, there are other settings that I will do along the way. Okay, but one is that fine. So in order to do those settings, what I'll have to do is I'll have to create an object of this class over here. So let me do it. So I'll call this class called speech config class. And I'll have to create an object of it. In order to create an object, I'll have to pass two things. First is the key of my resource. And second is the region in which the resource lies. Okay, once I do that, an object of this class will be created. And using the object, I will be able to perform a configuration. OK, and what all is that configuration that I'll perform? I'll explain that to you. Right? But fine, this line of code was important. Only if I write this line of code, a object of the class was created and using the object, I'll be able to perform some speech related configurations. So I will mention that, OK, where to uh, record my speech from and all of that related settings I'll mention. Fine. Now let's go ahead. What I will do is now I will ask the user that OK, try to speak something so that the resource can then translate it. OK, so I will try to enter a message to the user that please speak something. And uh, after or uh, before speaking, I might want to ask the user that OK, in which language do you want to do the translation? So let me ask that first. OK, I will allow the user to speak later on, but first let me ask in which language do you want to translate? OK, so I will say enter a target language. Uh, let's say if you want to translate it to French, enter FR. If you want to translate it into Spanish, enter ES. If you want to translate it into Hindi, enter HI. And if you want to translate it into Kannada, enter KN. OK, fine. So let me run the code. Let me check uh, if I am being asked the same or not. Yes, I am being asked the same. Uh, what I will do is the same sentence. I'll try to print it in a much more readable manner. Instead of just displaying the sentence in one line, let me divide it into multiple lines. 
So I'll divide this sentence over here into multiple lines. Let me do it. Okay. I'll just go ahead, run the code from scratch. And here you can see the same sentence is now being displayed into multiple lines, which is much more readable for me. All right, now let's go ahead. Uh, what we will do is uh, whatever the user is entering. Okay, first of all, the user is, uh, this terminal is asking me to enter over here. No, I want to enter it in new line. So here also I will have to enter a new line. So I'll say backslash n. Okay, so what will happen is instead of asking me to enter the value here, it will ask me to enter the value in a new line. Fine. Let me run the code again. And now you can see the value that it is asking me to enter. The cursor is now placed in a new line. So I will enter something, whatever it is, HI. And after entering, I want to move ahead. Okay, so let's say whatever the user enters, I want to save it. Okay, I, and I will try to save it in this variable. I will say that, okay, whatever is the, uh, whatever user enters is my target language. Okay. And based on my target language, I will move ahead. So I will say only if the target language mentioned by the user is among these four allowed target languages, then only move ahead or else quit. Okay. So only if the target language mentioned by the user is among the four target languages that I mentioned above. Only then move ahead. Otherwise, what to do? Otherwise, just quit. Okay. Otherwise, I will try to quit. Fine. And only if whatever the user has entered, the target language that the user has entered is among the four specified target languages over here, then only move ahead. And when I say move ahead, what, what all things I have to do? Let me specify the same. So first, what I will have to do is, I will have to specify my audio configuration. So let me specify my audio configuration over here. So I will just say that the audio that I will be speaking should be recorded using my default microphone. Okay, if you have any other microphone attached, you can use that as well. But here what I will do, I will try to record my speech using the default microphone. So let me do that. I'll say, please use the default microphone. Okay, then let's go ahead. What I will do now next is whatever uh, is the recording, I'll try to save it over here in this variable. Okay, whatever is the recording, we'll just try to save it in this particular variable. Uh, so let me do that. What name can I give to this particular variable? I can give any name by the way. Uh, fine, I'll, let me just give it this name of audio. Fine, audio. Okay. So whatever audio I'm speaking, that will be recorded and stored in this variable. Fine. Then once my audio is recorded, once my audio is recorded, I have to send that audio for translation purposes. Okay. So let me do that. So I will say send that audio for translation purposes. In order to do it, I will have to call a class. So inside a file called translation, we have this class called translation recognizer called translation recognizer. And what I will do is to this class, I will pass uh, all the details that are required in order to perform translation. First, this class will check that do I have access to the resource or not in order to perform translation. So I've already gained access to the resource earlier, right? I'll just pass that access over here. That okay, I have access to the resource, please move forward. Once I gain access, it will check that okay, fine. Give me the audio that you want me to convert into another language. Fine, so we'll give it the audio that we want to convert to other language. I've already recorded that audio. So whatever that audio is recorded, I'll then uh, pass it to this class so that it can do the translation based on that audio. Fine. So here I've mentioned the details. Okay, here I've just mentioned the details. So I've said that, okay, whatever the user speaks, uh, based on that uh, speech, do the translation. But let me now actually, uh, so over here I've just specified the settings that okay, going forward the user will speak something from the default microphone. Up till now the user has not spoken anything. I will have to write the code that will allow the user to speak. 
up till now in this code what i have done i have said that going forward in future the user will speak something from the default microphones take that speech and based on that speech do the translation okay fine but let me now actually ask the user to speak okay so i will just print a message to the user that please speak now please speak now okay so the user will try to speak and whatever the user is speaking uh what uh, i will do is i'll try to take that speech and recognize the uh, words in it okay and based on that recognize uh, recognition i'll try to do the translation so i'll say recognize the speech in one go in a asynchronous manner and whatever is the translation give me the translation okay get the translation results so it will go ahead and give me the translation results and uh, i will just go ahead and try to print the translation results for you now remember over here i might get a error the error is not because of our code uh, the issue is if there is a lot of traffic in the speed service then i will get a error okay so remember that error will not be because of our code but because there could be some uh, issue with respect to traffic let's see i hope there is no issue with respect to traffic if there is a issue we will have to wait for half an hour or one hour so that the traffic issue gets solved okay i hope there is no traffic issue uh, let me run the code okay over here by the way i have a issue which is that okay you are saying that if the target language is any of the four about target uh, four specified target languages then move ahead otherwise what to do otherwise i will say just pass don't do anything just pass fine let me now run the code okay it is saying enter a target language so i will write hi hello how are you okay and you can see uh, it asked me to speak now so i mentioned hello how are you and you can see it has given me translation in those four languages okay it has given me translation in french language it has given me translation in spanish language it has given me translation in hindi language here you can see in hindi it has written namaskar kya haal chal hai okay it has done that fine so translation has been done but what i want to do i spoke something it did the translation now i want to hear the translation back if i want to hear the translation back what to do let me show that to you okay i want so i also want to hear the translation back i just don't want the translated text to be displayed i want to hear it back okay i want to hear it back so how to do it let's see the first what i will do is i will only try uh, to print the text of translation so let me do that uh and uh, i only want to see the translated text in my target language currently i can see the translated text in all four but let's say i mention that my target language is hindi so i should only see the translated text in hindi first is that okay so first page is that that only show me the translated text of my target language okay so let me specify this in so i will say that depending on my target language depending on my target language just show me the translation depending on my target language just show me the translation and whatever is the translation i want to print it to the user after printing it to the user there is another thing that i want to do which is that instead of just showing the translated text i want to hear that translation back i want to hear it in the form of a voice so i will also show you how to do that okay so i'll say translated text is so and so value okay fine now let's go ahead uh, let's see at least if this is done or not i'll try to run the code it will ask me to enter a target language then it will ask me to speak so i'll speak something okay so let me show you. let's say my target language is hindi then it will ask me to speak i'll speak and it will show me the translation in hindi hello we are conducting a webinar in the field of artificial intelligence okay and you can see you wanted the translation only in your target language and we have done it okay similarly let's say if i say uh, my target language is spanish it will show me the translation in spanish okay let's say for spanish i should mention a code es okay then it will ask me to speak something and whatever i am speaking it will show me the translated version in spanish 
Hello, we are conducting a webinar in artificial intelligence. Okay, and you can see I'm getting the translated text in Spanish language. Fine. So depending on my target language, it will show me that translated text. Uh, now one student says, huh? Uh, Anand says, should we not use the target language? Yes, I'll just use it. I, I guess Anand's message is, uh, I mean, I think uh, he mentioned previously where I had not used my target language. And yes, I have used it right now. OK, then Anand mentions that. Uh, can we put Tamil? Yes, you can use Tamil language, so fine. Uh, let me check the code for Tamil as well. OK, uh, language code for Tamil. I guess it will be TL language code for Tamil in Azure. I will have to check the official code and we'll, we'll be able to use that code. So let me check the language code for Tamil. One second, for Hindi, it is HI. For Tamil, it is TA. Okay, TA, fine. So let me put that. So instead of Kannada, OK, fine. Let me have Kannada as well. TA for Tamil. OK, so I've included one more language of Tamil. OK, fine. And let me show you the translation now. It is a, a trying to ask me what is my target language. I'll say Tamil. And then whatever I will translate, it will uh, give me the translated. Uh, sorry, whatever I'll speak, it will translate it into the target language of my choice. And in, in this case, the target language is Tamil. Fine. So whatever I'll speak, it will translate it into Tamil. Hello, we are conducting a webinar in artificial intelligence. Okay, and here you can see it's written in Tamil. So if you are familiar with Tamil language, uh, you can cross verify if it's correct or not. OK, so you can do in any language. There are many languages supported on. OK, fine. Anyways, let's go ahead. Now what I want to do, fine, it is doing the translation, giving me the tra translated text, but I want to hear that translation back in the form of a voice. So how to do it? OK, let's go ahead and let's see how to do it. So first I will need some voices. OK, in order to hear that translation. So depending on the language, you will have to uh, choose the voice of your choice. OK. So for example, let me show that to you. So if I want to convert text to speech, if I want to convert text to speech, OK, you will have to use different, different voices. So for example, for French, you will have a voice called Henry Neural. I'll just search for it. And yes, you can see for French, you have many, many voices. One of them is Henry Neural. So what you can do is you can take this voice and you will say that, OK, if the target language is French, then use this voice. Uh, to hear the translated text in the form of a voice, use this particular voice. OK, so I'll just mention the voice name. Similarly, for different, different languages, I'll mention different, different voice name. For Spanish, it could be different. OK, for Spanish, if I remember correctly, we have one voice called er Ervira Neural. Let me show you that. Yes, for Spanish, you can see we have a voice called Elvira Neural. So I'll take this voice code and put it in my coding file. OK, similarly, uh, for Hindi, we have Madhur Neural. For Hindi, we have Madhur Neural, which is one of the voices. Let me show that to you. Madhur Neural. OK, you can see for Hindi, two voices are supported. One of the voices is Madhur Neural. OK, so let me take that voice code and put it in my coding file. Similarly, for uh, Kannada, we have Gagan Neural. OK, Gagan Neural. For Kannada, you can see two voices are supported. One of them is Gagan Neural. OK, so I'll just mention my code that if it's Kannada, then use this particular voice called Gagan Neural. OK, at last, let's say if the uh, target language is Tamil, then I might want to use a different voice. OK, so let's say for Tamil, let me check the voice code. For Tamil, you can see there are two voice codes supported, Pallavi Neural and Valu Neural. 
I can choose any one over here. Fine. Let me choose the last one. Valu per neural. That is one of the voice goals. Okay, fine. Then I will specify in my code that depending on the target language, choose the voice that is present over here. If it's Hindi, choose Madhur neural. If it's Spanish, choose Elvira neural. If it's French, choose Henry neural and so on. I'll have to mention that in my code. Okay, so I'll say based on the target language, get the voice. Okay, based on the target language, get the voice. Fine. So let's go ahead and uh, let us mention the same over here. I will say that now uh, the resource will try to speak back and while speaking back, make sure that the voice that you use is based on the target language. OK, I will say make sure that the voice that you use is based on the target language. That I have mentioned in this dictionary, in this dictionary called VOICES, in this dictionary called VOICES, uh, take the a uh, voice name from there based on the target language. OK, so based on the target language, take the voice name. Fine, so it will take the voice name and then what it will do is. Uh, I will have to mention over here that this is my speech configuration. Uh, OK, so one other thing that I could have to do is. I will have to call a class. OK, so let me do that. So in order to actually get the speech back, I will have to call the class called speech synthesizer. I'll have to create an object of this class called speech synthesizer. OK. There I'll pass my configuration settings. Fine, I'll get an object of this class. And using the object, I'll show you what to do. Using the object, I'll show you what to do. Fine. And just one line of code is left now. I will say that, okay, you have got all the configuration details, you have got the voice name and everything. Now I want to hear the speech. So I will say, get the speech based on the text in an asynchronous manner. Okay. And which speech do I want to hear? I want to hear this translated version. So this translated version that I have with me, okay, this translated version that I have with me. I just want to go ahead and uh, hear it back in the form of a voice. Fine. And whatever is the voice, I just want to hear it get uh, hear it back. Okay, so I'll say get the voice forms. Right. Let's go ahead and let's uh, run the code and let's see whether it works. I'll have to do one thing while sharing the screen now. I will also have to include the voice now. So is there a way to include the voice? Uh, okay, let me share it again. And yes, here I have an option to include sound. Ah, so what will happen is uh, now I'll also be uh, you guys will also be able to hear the voice in the uh, meeting. OK, fine. Let me run the code and let's check whether it works or not. It is asking me to enter a target language. Let's say my target language is Hindi. Fine, then it will ask me to speak something and I'll speak. Hello, we are conducting a webinar in the field of artificial intelligence. Hello, hum artificial intelligence ke kshetra mein ek webinar ayojit kar rahe hain. Okay, were you guys able to hear it? I don't know. I was able to hear it. But what about you guys? Were you able to hear it? Hear the translated speech? Yes or no? Yes, right? Okay, fine. So that's good. OK, like that you can try with different different languages. Uh, OK, now let's say. Uh, if you want to do this in uh, Tamil. OK, so let me enter the target language Tamil and then I'll speak something. Hello, today is a Saturday and we are just conducting a webinar on AI 900. Vanakkam. Intri Sanikarame, Nangal, Yayun Badukochi and Pochi and Il would webinar Naratigerom. Okay, so those who are familiar with Tamil, they can cross verify whether they translated, uh, whether the translation was uh, fine or not. Okay, like this, you can try with different, different target languages of your choice. Okay, what I want to do is uh, I want to run this in a loop. See, because any translation I want to do, I have to run my code again and again, right? In order to avoid this, I will just run a loop. 
Okay. So this entire code, I'll put it in a loop. So uh, let me put this in a while loop. I'll say unless and until I don't want to quit, keep on running the loop. Okay. So this entire code of getting my speech, then translating it. Okay, I'll just put it in a loop. Okay, I've done that. Fine. So now again and again, I won't have to run the code to perform translation. Here, yeah, what is saying? Huh? This variable not defined. Okay. So let me define it outside the loop. And currently, I'll just keep it as a empty string. Fine. And now it should work. Okay. It is asking me to enter a target language. Let me enter Spanish. Hello. How are you? Hola, como estas? Okay, and you can see I was able to get the translation. And you can see now automatically it is asking me that okay, again, do you want to perform the translation? So enter a target language. So that's why I ran that loop. That every time I won't have to run the code to do the translation. Fine. And what I want is whatever the user enters, if it is not out of these five mentioned target languages, then I want to quit. Okay, so I will say that if whatever the user mentioned is not within those five mentioned target languages, then else what I want to do, I want to quit. So I'll say in that case, I want to quit. Okay, and if you want to quit, then what will happen? This while loop won't run. Okay, while loop will only run unless and until you want to quit. But if you want to quit, this while loop won't run there. Fine. Let me go ahead. Uh, I'll just show you whether this works correctly or not. It is asking me to enter a target language. Hello, my name is Smith. Bonjour, je m'appelle Smith. Okay, fine. And again, you can see now, suppose if I enter a, a, a enter anything that is not within these five target languages, let's say I enter something like ABC. Now ABC is not within these five target languages, then what will happen? In that case, it will assume that I want to quit. And if you want to quit, then this loop will stop working and you will come outside of the loop. And let me show you that. You will see that if I enter ABC, I come outside of the loop. Okay. And the loop stops working. Okay. Vishal says, is there a setting to select gender, uh, male or female? Uh, there is a way to select gender. What you can do is if you have a look at the voice codes, you can see there are two voice codes given. For example, for Tamil, I chose the male version. Let's say if you want to enter female version, you can do that. Similarly, for Hindi, you will see different versions of voices. Okay, for example, I chose this male version, Madhur Neural. I can enter female version, which is Swara Neural. Okay, so let me enter that Swara Neural. So I'll say for Hindi, use this voice Swara Neural. Okay, and uh, uh, you are asking, can we change the speed variation? No, that is fixed, buddy, Visha. That is fixed. All you can do is you can choose the voice, but in that voice, whatever pause it is taking, all of that, that is fixed. Okay, that you cannot change. Okay, so whatever voices Azure is providing, there uh, every voice variation is fixed. All you can do is choose the voice, but within that voice, you cannot do any setting. So for example, now what I have done is for Hindi, I have chosen a female uh, voice. So let me show that to you now. Let me enter a target language of Hindi, then I'll speak something. Hello, how are you? Namaskar, kya hal chal hai? Okay, and if you heard, you heard it properly, you would uh, have observed that, uh, that uh, a speech was of a female voice. Okay. That translated speech was of female voice. Like that, you can do it. Okay, can you share the code? Yes. I'll share the code. Try to run it in your uh, laptop. Okay. Uh, just try to run it, and the same code will work. Okay, I've uh, given my code to you guys. Now, as a practice, guys, remember that uh, you should not expose your key to anyone. Okay. Uh, the thing is, let's say if you if I expose you my key, like for example, I've shared my code. Now, if you will run the code in your laptop, you will be able to use it. Every time when you run it, uh, some uh, uh, cost will be deducted from my Azure account. Okay, some amount of rupees will be deducted. 
So as a practice, make sure that you do not expose your key to anyone. Uh, fine. For me, it's fine. Even if you try to uh, run the code uh, for some, some attempts, it's fine if some cost is deducted. Okay, so for me, it's fine. But for you, remember that do not expose your key to anyone. Okay, if you expose your key, they will be able to use your resource. And every time they use the resource, some amount will be deducted there. Okay, for me, it's fine if some amount is deducted. But as a practice, make sure do not expose the key to anyone. Okay, so this was our uh, first lab, right? This was our first lab. Uh, Anand mentions, where do you get the key? So Anand, once we create a resource of speech service, right? Do you remember? We created a resource of speech service. I'll show you how to go to that resource. So you will go to resource group section. There, if you remember, we created this resource group called webinar RG. Within this resource group, I have one resource called webinar speech resource. I'll go to that resource. And then if I go to keys and endpoint section, which is to the left hand side of my screen, here if I go there, you can see I'll be able to see my key. Okay. Here there are two keys available. You can use any one of them. Okay. Rohit mentions that does Azure store our input data? It might store it. We do not have any control. So if you want that, if you have some sensitive data that you might want, might not want Azure to use, or uh, I mean, or any other cloud provider to use, don't use that cloud provider. Okay. Because you don't have any control, buddy. It might use it. Although it will say that, no, no, we are not storing data, your personal data and all. If they want to use it, they can. Although as a practice, they have committed that, no, whenever you are using the service, we won't store any of your input data. That's the uh, announcement that they have made officially. Okay, but theoretically, you should not trust any cloud provider. If you have some sensitive information, do not use that cloud provider. Okay, that's why if you if you would have heard Ola, for example, shifted to their own cloud, right? Although it was a different reason why they shifted to their own cloud, but one of the reasons could be security as well. Okay, although on the internet it was it was a different reason why they shifted to their own cloud. But uh, as a announcement, uh, the, what they have announced is no, they don't store their uh, store your personal uh, input data that you are passing to any AI service. But we can't trust anyone. Okay. Huh, Ganesh says all IT company. Yes, I agree. But I, what I'm saying is, let's say if you uh, are using very, very sensitive data, something like let's say if you are in a uh, government agency where the data is very, very sensitive at that time, do not trust it. OK, but yeah, if, I mean, for your company purpose, you can. And in any way, Azure has made that announcement that they are not storing your personal data. If you want to trust that announcement, well and good. And nowadays, as one person mentioned, right? Nowadays, many people are trusting cloud providers. So if you want to trust, well and good. But for very, very sensitive data, still, I would be hesitant. That's all. OK, anyways, uh, let's go ahead. Uh, now, what we'll do is we'll move on to our second lab. OK, uh, now let's move on to our second lab over here. So let's see, what should we do? What should we do? Mm, let's move on to a lab where we work with images. OK, so if I show you the list of Azure AI services. We have already seen a lab of speech service. OK, we have already seen a lab over here of speech service. This is already done. Now let me show you a lab of vision service. OK, wherein we'll have some images and we'll try to perform uh, uh, analysis on those images. So how to do it? Let's go ahead and let's see. So what I would do is first, uh, let me first gather the images that I might want to analyze. So I'll gather the images over here. Let me take this images folder and paste it in this folder called lab2. Lab2 image analysis. Okay. Fine, and let me show you the images that will be performing analysis on. So let's suppose this image. So what I want to do is I want to perform analysis like. Uh, uh, let me load the image here. It is loaded now here. What I want to do is I want to perform analysis over here, like uh, what all objects were detected in the image, then what all uh, what are the tags given to that object? So for example, if it detects this object, 
uh, then the server should know that this object is a dog. If it detects this object, it should know that this object is a car. If it detects this object, it should know that this object is a person and so on. I want it to detect objects automatically. OK, how to do it? Let's go ahead and let's see. So what I will do is I will go to Azure AI services. And there I will have an option to create a resource of vision service. OK, so. Let's go ahead and uh, let's do that over here. So if I want to create a resource of vision service, how would I do it? And uh, all of that we'll see over here. OK, now let's go ahead. So what I will do is you can see uh, there is a option to create a resource of vision service over here. OK, uh, you might see this option as well, which is Azure AI services multi service account. Let me open up that. OK, so why was this created? So let me explain that to you. See, the thing is, if you create a resource of document intelligence service, then you can only perform analysis on documents. If you create a resource of speech service, then you can only use the speech service capability. What if you want a all in one service? OK, uh, wherein you create a resource of that service and you can use the service for speech translation, for document intelligence, for vision analysis and so on. Well, you have this option to create a resource of multi service account. Here you will get access to facilities of speech service. You will get access to facilities of vision service and so on. Right. So if you want to create a resource of this one, you can. OK, or if you want to directly create a resource of vision service, you can do that as well. It's completely up to you. Fine. Let me show you how to create a resource of this multi service account. With that, you will get access to multiple services like vision service, document intelligence service in one go with one resource. OK, so no need to create different resource for different services. That one resource you can use for multiple services. OK, here you can see in the description it has written. You will get access to vision service, language service, search service, uh, speech service and so on. OK, fine. Let me fill in the details of the form so I can create a resource of this particular service over here. Before I go ahead, one student is asking, will the cost be the same? No, the cost will be slightly higher for a resource of multi service account. OK, it will be slightly higher because it will support. It will give you support for multiple services, right? So the cost is slightly higher and see uh, the cost will only be. I mean, for creating the resource, the cost is very minuscule. Cost will only be deducted only if you try to use the resource. For creating the resource, yes, some cost is there, but it's very minuscule. OK, it's very minuscule. But to answer your question, technically even that minuscule amount, if you want to compare uh, for resource of this service, it will be slightly higher. OK, because here we are creating a resource of multi service account. You will get access to multiple services, so the cost will be slightly higher for creating a resource. But for using the resource, no cost is the same. If you use the resource of multi service account to do speech translation or if you use the service or, or if you use the resource of speech uh, service for speech translation, cost is the same for using for creating. Yes, here the cost will be slightly higher. Okay. Made sense on it. If it did not, if your doubt is not clear, let me. Okay. I'm proceeding ahead, but if your doubt is not clear, do let me clear on and open. Fine, let's go ahead. Let's fill in the details of the form to create a resource of multi service account. With that, we'll get access to vision service, language service, search service in one go. OK. First, it is asking me to select subscription. As I mentioned in one account, you can have more than one subscriptions. Choose the subscription of your choice that has enough money in it. OK, fine. Here, anyways, I just have one op uh, option available, so I'll choose that option. After that, it is asking me to select a resource group. You can select an existing resource group or you can create a new one. I will select an existing resource group that I used for my first lab. Let's select that resource group only. Resource groups are used for better resource management. Nothing else. Fine. After that, it is asking me to select the region for my resource. Make sure to choose a region that is closer to your user for better latency. So if your user is in the United States, choose a region closer to United States just for better latency. After that, it is asking me to give a name to the resource. So let's give it a name. I'll call it a webinar. Vision. A resource. Or I mean, this resource will be used for multiple things, right? So let me say webinar. 
multi resource okay after that is asking me to choose the pricing tier let me choose that here i have exhausted the uh, limit of free tier with this multi service account okay that's why that free tier option is now no longer visible to me i just have one option visible to me which is standard tier with that some amount will be deducted with free tier uh, you won't be charged anything for usage okay fine let me agree to the terms and conditions and now i will directly jump on to review plus create i will ask azure to uh, review and see whether it can give me the things that i'm asking for that review was successful and now because of that the create button has been enabled and now i'll just go ahead and click on the create button to create a resource of this service i can use the resource for performing analysis on images i can use this same resource for doing speech translation and so on because i have created resource of multi service account i can use the resource for gaining access to multiple services okay let us just wait for the resource to get created it has been created over here let me go to the resource and see if everything is all right and everything is all right now that the resource has been created let us try to use it so what i will do is i'll create a coding file Uh, let me call it uh, image analysis dot py. Okay, fine. And now what I will try to do is uh, I'll try to uh, perform some basic analysis. Let's see how to do it. So first, I will have to mention the key of the resource. Only then I will gain access to the resource. So first, I will mention the key. So I'll go to keys and endpoint section, which is present in the left hand side of your screen. If I go over there, I'll get gain access to all of the required uh, details for gaining authentication. There are two keys. You can use any one. Fine. So first I will store the key of my resource. Next, I will mention the link through which I will gain access to the resource. So this is the link or in other words, this is the endpoint through which I'll gain access to the resource. So let me mention the endpoint as well. So these are the two things that are needed to gain access to this particular resource. Fine, I have mentioned those two things. Now let's move forward. Now, in order to actually gain access to the resource, I will need help of a class which I will import. So from Azure folder, there is a file called sorry, there is another subfolder called AI. Inside that subfolder, I have another subfolder called Vision. Inside it, I have a file called Image Analysis, and inside that file, I have this class called Image Analysis Client. Inside this, I have a class called image analysis client, which will help me to gain authentication to the resource that I just created on the Azure portal. Fine. Let me call that class. And inside the class, I will have to pass two things. First is the endpoint of my resource. First is the endpoint of my resource. Second is the key, or uh, that key will act as a credential, right? So I'll have to pass the credential. Now I can't pass the credential over here directly, so I will need help of a function which I will import. So let me take help of that function over here and I'll just go ahead and import that function. So I will say from Azure folder, there is another subfolder called core. Inside that subfolder, there is a file called credential and inside that file, I have this function called Azure key credential. Azure key credential. Now what I'll do? is using the function i'll try to pass the key so let me call this function called azure key credentials and within it i'll pass the key so i can't pass the key directly i have to pass it using the function over here. that's the rule okay fine and with this what will happen is i will gain access to the resource i'll gain access to the vision resource okay fine uh, let me just print a message to the user that access to vision resource has been granted okay i hope uh, to this uh, to this vision service there is no traffic there is no issue of traffic so that we are able to use it fine let me run the code for that this code coding file is inside the lab 2 folder let me open the lab 2 folder in the terminal and now you can see in the terminal uh, 
the address is pointing to lab2 folder. Now inside it, I want to run this file called image analysis.py. And let me check if using this, whether I'm able to gain access to the resource or not. Okay, saying no such file. Image analysis, is the name wrong? Yes, the name is wrong. I'll have to rename this analysis, A-N-E-L-Y-S-I-S. Okay, by right, now hopefully it should work. No, again, some issue. Uh, why am I getting this error? Image analysis.py. Name is correct, right? Okay, fine. In order to avoid that spelling mistake, let me run the code directly. Ah, okay, it ran directly, but here I'm uh, getting an error, which is that there is no file called credential, and here there's spelling mistake. We should have a S at the end. Fine. Let me run this code. Ah, analysis to vision resource has been granted. So it ran directly. Let me check uh, why it did not run with the other approach. I have image. Achha. Did I by mistake put this inside images folder? Where has then where has this vanished? Achha, sorry, my mistake. This coding file was outside lab two. My mistake. Let me cut it and let me paste it over here. Okay, now it should work. Now it should work. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's run the code. So I will say I want to run the Python file called image analysis. Dot py. Okay, fine. And access to vision resource has been granted. That's good. Now let's go ahead. And what I'll do is I'll try to perform analysis over my images. So first I will mention the path of the image on which I want to perform analysis. One by one I will do analysis. Okay. So what I will do is I'll say inside the images folder, there is a file called uh, building.py, let's say. There is a file called building.py. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to perform analysis on it. But in order to perform analysis, you have to pass image data in the form of hexadecimal format. I repeat, you have to pass image data in the form of hexadecimal format. Okay, that's the rule. So let's see how to get data of image in a hexadecimal format. So I will say open the image that is mentioned in the file path and read it in such a way that I get data in the form of hexadecimal format. So this code of RB stands for read binary, which means that I'll read it in such a way that I'll get data in the form of hexadecimal format. Fine. So let me write the code to read the file and I will read it in such a way that the image data is in hexadecimal format. What I'll do is later I'll try to print it just to show to you that yes, indeed we are getting data in the form of hexadecimal format. Let's check. Okay, here I have an issue, which is that it says there is no such file that exists. Building, sorry, it's not building.py, it's building.jpg. That image file extension is jpg. Okay, so the file extension was wrong. Fine, and now you can see I wanted to read the image data in hexadecimal format, and here you can see I'm getting image data in hexadecimal format. Okay, once I get image data in hexadecimal format, I can pass it to the resource for performing analysis. Fine, so let's perform analysis. Uh, and I will say that, okay, my image data I'm passing which is in hexadecimal format. Uh, after passing my image data, I will also mention exactly what do I want to analyze. So what visual features do I want to analyze over here? So I will say on that image, I, I might want to analyze. Uh, I might want to analyze caption, right? So I might want to generate caption of over the images and in order to generate it, I will have to do this import. So let me do that import. So I'll just go ahead, finish up this import over here. And after that, I'll show you what to do next. 
Okay, I'll have to take some AI models. And we have the AI models for visual features. Okay, so I'll just say, uh, take the AI model for generating caption. Then take the AI model for generating tags. Take the AI model for generating, uh, sorry, for detecting objects. Uh, and it could be all objects, uh, a living object, non-living object. But what if you only want to detect person, which is a living object, you only want to detect a person, not all objects. Then you can even detect that with help of this code. You will say, I only want to detect people. Fine, then uh, you also want it. Fine, so let us keep up till uh, uh, this stage only. I want to detect these four things. I want to perform analysis on these four visual features. First is I, I want to automatically generate caption. So for example, it, uh, if anybody shows me this image, if anybody shows this image to Azure, Azure should say that, okay, your uh, person is walking a dog. It should generate that caption aut automatically, okay? It should tell that what is happening in the image. So that is caption generation. Second tag, so it should tell me that, okay, in this image, what all uh, things are there, it, and, it, and it will automatically generate tags. For example, we have a dog in the image. So first tag is dog. Then we have a person in the image. So second tag is person. Then we have a car in the image. So next tag is car and so on. Okay, fine. Then it will detect uh, information about objects. So exactly where in the image we have the objects. So the coordinates of the detected object. Uh, but it will detect uh, all the objects, living objects, non-living objects. What if you only want to detect people? No, not uh, no other objects, just people. In that case, that option is also available. Fine. Uh, enough for the theory. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's pass this code to do analysis. And I'll get the results over here. And what I'll do is I'll just print the results to you later on. Okay, let me just go ahead and print, print the raw result to you. So let me print the raw result. Okay, here I have an error which says that there is some issue. Ah, huh. okay, my mistake. The name of this uh, parameter should be visual underscore features. As it suggests over here, visual underscore features. Fine. Let me correct that mistake. After that, it should work. Okay. And you can see it has performed analysis. And the result of that analysis, it has posted to me over here. The over here, these are raw uh, result that I'm getting. What I want to do is let's say one by one. Uh, let's say I want to find result for caption. So how to do it? Let me show that to you. So I only want the result for caption generation. So I can do that. Okay, and you're getting result for caption generations. For example, I try to perform analysis on this image. And on this image, it has generated a caption saying, a large white building with a dome and a large lawn with United States Capitol in the background. Okay, fine. So it has generated this caption like that on different different images. You can generate caption. Let's say on this image, which is straight.jpg, you want to generate caption. You can go ahead and do it. Let me show that to you. And you can see for this image, which is street.jpg, it has generated a caption saying a man walking a dog on a leash on a street, right? And then it has also given the confidence value that it has in its uh, uh, output, okay? So confidence value will be between zero to one. Uh, the more higher the value, the more the model conf is, is confident about, about, uh, about its result. So here it is 82% confident, fine. Fine, let me show the same result uh, in a much more readable manner. So I will say that the caption is so and so. And uh, after generating the caption, I also want to show the confidence value. So I'll say the confidence Will be in which will be in the form of a float value, right? Uh, your you can see confidence value is in decimal, which which means float. 
So here, let me mention that. Okay, fine. And I want it to convert it into percentage. So what I will have to do is in order to convert it to percentage, I will have to multiply this by 100 later on. Fine. For now, let me keep it as it is. Uh, and here I will just complete my code. Okay. That within this first curly braces, I want the caption text. Okay, I want the text of my caption. You can see I want the text of my caption. So I will say within my first curly braces, I want the text of my caption. Then within my second curly braces, I want the confidence value of that caption. So I want the confidence value. So I'm saying the results of your caption get the confidence value. And if you want to convert it to percentage, you will have to multiply that confidence value by 100. I'll say multiply it by 100. Fine, let's go ahead, let's run the code. And now the result is shown to you in a much more readable manner. Let me remove that previous print statement and let me run the code again. And now you will observe that the result is shown to you in a much more readable manner. So caption is so and so and confidence is this much percentage. OK, like that. Uh, next, what I wanted to do was tag detection, right? So it should give tags to everything that it detects. So your let me print out that information for you. So it would have detected various tags in the form of a list. So first, let me print out that raw data. So I'll say give me the tags that are there in the form of a list. I'll just go ahead, run the code. So apart from caption generation, now you can see we get result for tag detection as well. So it has detected one tag called outdoor. Then it has detected another tag called land vehicle. It has detected another tag called building. OK, so inside this image, whatever tags it finds, uh, I mean, whatever things it detects, it will give a tag to it. OK, all right, fine. Uh, so let's suppose I want to show the same thing in a much more readable manner. Here I'm getting all lot of tags, so I'll have to run a loop. So I will say for each tag that we are getting from this list, print the tag name and the confidence that you have in the tag. So similar thing to what we did earlier. It's just that now I'll be printing the tag. So I will say that print the tag name. OK, print the tag name. Name here you can see it name. OK, so let me mention it. Print the tag name. And then the confidence that we have in the tag. I'll say print the confidence that we have in the tag. OK, you can see the confidence value over here. Fine, let's go ahead. Let's run the code. And you can see, uh, fine, one minute, let me remove the previous print statement. And now let me run the code again so that you can see the result in a much more readable manner. You can see apart from caption generation, now we can see tag detection as well. This is the first tag, second tag, third tag, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. Okay, like that, it has detected tags. Fine. Uh, similarly, uh, what we wanted to do was we wanted it to detect objects. So let's see what it has detected actually. It should give me coordinates of the objects and everything. So let me check whether that has happened or not. So I will say give me the raw result for object detection. And it would have, it would have detected various objects over here in the form of a list. So let me see that raw data. Then I will see how to make it better. OK, you can see this is the result that I got from object detection. It has detected some objects and you can see it has given me the coordinates, right? Uh, now, let me do one thing. Let us understand. So for example, if I have an object and if I want to draw a box over the object, I'll need two things at least. First is the starting point coordinate and ending point coordinate. Here it has given me the starting point coordinate. It has given me the X and Y value. OK, it's just that ending point coordinate it has not given. Instead of that, it has given me the width of the object. 
and it has given me the height of the object okay so using these two things can you give me what will be the coordinate of the second point over here this point the one that i am circling second point over here can you give me the coordinates of the second point what will it be anyone in the chat if the first point is x comma y then my second point will be what any suggestions any hints can i say it will be x plus w comma y plus h that will be the coordinate of the second point so first point is x comma y second point will be x plus w and y plus h okay fine anyways let's go ahead and what i will do now is uh, based on uh, okay first of all i'll try to print the object names to you guys so let me do one thing i have a lot of objects being detected Okay, I have a lot of objects being detected. So one by one, I'll print their names and the confidence that we have in those objects. So let's do it one by one. So I'll say detected object name is so and so. Okay. Uh, and uh, i will try to print its confidence as well okay fine uh, i mean do we have the confidence value yes we do it's just that it is not available directly or fine is it available directly mm, no it's not because here if i run a loop let's say in my first element i'll get this entire value and in order to get the name of my object, I will have to go through uh, this. Uh, I mean, over here I can see a dictionary. So in order to ga gain access to this value, I will have to use the key of the dictionary, which is tags. So I'll say object dot tags dot name. Similarly, object dot tags dot confidence. Yeah, that will work. But so just some syntax changes. And now let's go ahead. And let's see whether I'm able to get the names of the uh, objects or not. Here I'm uh, getting an issue. Uh, OK, what is that issue? Let's see. First of all, I'll try to print the entire raw data as it is. Let's see the issue. OK, we are getting error, but let's see the entire raw data. OK, so we wanted to go into this value. In order to go into this value first, I will have to go through this key called tags. Now, this key called tags references this entire list. OK, so I will have to go inside the list first. And inside the list, I have one value, which is this entire dictionary. In order to gain access to that value, in order to gain access to first value of a list, I will have to use index 0. So I'll just write index 0. Fine, and now it should work. Let me clear this out. And now if I run the code, it will work definitely. Let's check. And it does work. So you can see the detected object names and their confidence values. OK, fine. And what I will do is just so that I can see the results in a much more readable manner, I'll separate the results with the help of a new line. OK, and you will see now the results for uh, uh, caption generation, result for that tag detection and result for object detection is separated with a new line in between. OK, now what I want to do is based on this uh, detected object, what I want to do is if you remember, we also got coordinates for that object. And I just want to uh, draw a rectangle over the image based on those coordinates. Fine. So let's see where we'll get the coordinates. So I'll print out this raw data first. Let me print out this raw data and see how will we get the coordinates. I want to gain access to coordinates. In order to gain access to coordinates, let's see what to do. This is my raw data. OK, my coordinates are available uh, over here in this dictionary. In order to uh, gain access to this value, I'll have to use this key 
called bounding box right so i'll say for each object you are getting a bounding box value that is how you will get the coordinates okay that is how you will get the coordinates obtained coordinates now based on the obtained coordinates i want to create a rectangle or a box basically so in order to create it i will have to pass two points okay first is x comma y so from the obtained coordinates i'll get the x value and the y value right first i'll get the x value and then the y value now for the second point as i mentioned it will be x plus w and y plus h or in other words x plus width and y plus height right so i'll do the same so over here i'll say x plus width x plus width comma y plus height comma y plus height okay i've done it i've mentioned those two points first point coordinate will be x comma y second point coordinate will be x plus w comma y plus h or in other words x plus width comma y plus height okay i have mentioned it uh fine once we get the rectangle coordinates i'll show you what to do next rectangle coordinates now based on these rectangle coordinates i want to draw a rectangle over the image fine so let's see how to draw a rectangle over the image over here in order to draw a rectangle uh i will have to create a canvas first so let me go ahead and uh, let me draw that particular canvas so i'm just thinking okay how will i draw that canvas i can use one approach over here which is using this class called image draw so let me check if that approach works so what i'll do is from the pil file there is a class called image draw okay and what i would want to do is uh, i want to draw over the image i will have to specify that setting using this class but before that in order to create a canvas i will need help of matplotlib library so inside the matplotlib folder there is a file called pyplot and that file i will reference it as plt okay and in order to canvas i'll need help of this file so i'll say using the file called plt there is a function called figure and this will help me to create a blank canvas okay the i uh, will mention a size for this canvas i will say for now keep it of the same size as the original image so the original image that i have with me uh i want it of the same size okay but how can i get uh, information about the size of the image in order to get information about size of the image i will have to open up that image in order to open up that image i will use another class called image okay and using this class what i will do is i'll say please open up the image that i have mentioned in this particular path about this is the path of the image using the path open it up okay once the image is opened i want to get information about the width and height of the image so i'll say based on the open image make sure that you get the width and height information and using the same width and height we want to create a blank canvas okay we want to create a blank canvas using the same width and height we want to create a blank canvas fine once the canvas is drawn i'll show you what to do next okay fine we have the canvas over here uh and now i will say going forward i might want to draw something over this particular image okay so i'll just mention over here using this particular class and inside the class we have a method called draw i will say in future i might want to draw something over this image so, so keep that in mind okay i'll say that this is the image that i might want to draw it on the canvas that i might up till now i have not drawn it i'm just saying that in future i might want to do this i might want to do that okay now let's go ahead now how will i draw what i want to draw over the image i want to draw a rectangle so i will say that 
I've already specified these settings that going forward, I might want to draw something. OK, so what I want to draw, I want to draw a rectangle. I'll say please draw a rectangle. Using the coordinates that are mentioned above. OK, and uh, the outline of the rectangle, I want it to be of some color. Let's say cyan color, which is similar to blue. OK, because that rectangle will have four lines, right? It will have an outline consisting of four lines. So you want it of which color? Yellow or some other color? You can specify it. Here I have specified cyan color. Then what is the width of those lines that you want? So I will say I want it to be of three pixels. If you want a fatter outline, increase the width of pixels over here. So it's completely up to you. I will set it to three pixels. If you want a fatter outline, increase the width. If you want a thinner outline, decrease the width. After that, let me go ahead. Uh, and uh, fine, it will try to draw that rectangle over here. Apart from drawing the rectangle, I also want to do more things, but fine. For now, let's go ahead. It will draw that rectangle over each detected object. At the end, I will say I just want to see the image. And instead of, OK, uh, let me do one thing. This drawing that will have, I want to output it in a different file. So I will say, please output it in this file called objects.jpg. And uh, what I would want to do over here is mm, I might want to save uh, my results of the drawing. OK, that I made on the canvas. I might want to save the results over here in this file. OK, in this particular file. All right, fine. And at the end, I'll just uh, put a message to the user that uh, results saved in objects.jpg. OK, let's see whether a new image called objects.jpg is created. And inside that, what will I have? I should have rectangle over each of the object that was detected. Let's see. Uh, I will just go ahead and check if everything is fine. Everything seems fine, so let's see it now. OK, I'm getting all the results. Here I have an issue, which is that there is a spelling with a rectangle. There is a spelling issue over here, so here I should write rectangle. OK, let us correct that spelling issue. And then this code should work. OK, ha. Huh. Now while say, saving the uh, image over here, inside this file I have an have issue. Let's understand this issue. It says that, OK, let me first write it down over here with the help of a pen. I'll just write it down. That what is the original width of the image? OK, currently it is saving it as uh, 80,000, right? And the height that it is saving of the image is 53,300. How come it got uh, so uh, big? Let's try to see what happened. OK, so here uh, if I check the width and height of my original image. OK, let me print it out for you. I'll say original image. width and I'll just print it out to you and see the thing that is happening. OK, see the width as well as the height. In the original image, the size was very small. If you have a look, the width will be 800 if I'm not wrong. Uh, let me show that to you above. Above, above. Uh, original width, original height. You can see original width of image was 800. How did it get converted to 80,000? Because in the error, it's saying that while saving the image, the width is 80,000. If I scroll back, if I scroll down, you can see while saving, it says the width is of 80,000. From 800, how did it convert to 80,000? So in between, some multiplication by 100 is happening. Similarly, for height, previously it was 533. But while saving, it is getting converted to 5, uh, 53,300. So again, the height is being multiplied by 100. 
So I will say while creating the canvas, if it's automatically multiplying by 100, then in order to return it back to the original size, divide it by 100. OK, so by default, it is multiplying the multiplying by 100. So in order to revert it to the original size, divide it by 100. After this, the code should work and we should have no issues. Hopefully, yes, we have no issues. It says results are saved in objects.jpg. Let's open objects.jpg. And you can see we have detected rectangles over the images. Fine. There are other things you can do. Let's say you want to print out the tags above each of the rectangles. You can even do that. Let me show you how to do that. OK, so over here I will just say that I want to uh, write down text or I want to annotate something. OK, uh, so for example, if I do something on the screen, let's say I'm doing something over here on the screen. This is called annotation. OK, so similarly, if I want to do something on the image, it will be called annotation. So I want to annotate text. OK, so this method is used to or sorry, this function is used to annotate text. Fine. So I'll say what do I want to annotate? I want to annotate the tag names. We know how to get the tag names over here. We know that how to get our tag names. Uh, in fact. Our tag names should be. Appearing over here. OK, just like we did before. If you remember for generating tag names, what did we do? Uh, OK, by the way, here I think I'll have to use a different approach. Let me print the raw result. OK, here the raw result is printed. My tag name is present over here. Coordinates are your tag name is here. OK, fine. So I'll iterate over each element. Inside the element in order to get the name of the tag, I'll have to use this key called T T A G S T A G S. That is the one that I'll have to write. T A G S for every object. Go through this key called T A G S. Now inside the key uh, through this key, we'll get gain access to this value, which is a list value. In that list, we have a single dictionary. In order to gain access to that dictionary, I will have to subset from this particular list over here. OK, this square brackets denotes a list. In order to gain the first element of the list, I'll have to use index zero. Fine, I'll gain access to this particular dictionary. And from this dictionary, I want to gain this value. This value will be obtained using the key called NAME. So let me use that key called NAME. Fine. So this will be the text that I want to annotate. Where do I want to annotate? So I want to annotate it where the rectangle is starting from. The rectangle is starting at this particular coordinate, x, comma, y. So from there, I want to start my text annotation and what will be the background color? Uh, let me assign a back background color as well. Background color. I'll say CR. Fine, let's go ahead. Let's see what happens now. Previously we were only getting ha huh, see previously we were only getting information about those rectangles. Now above rectangles, I can see that tag information as well. So you can do all of this fine. You can even make this more prettier. Currently you can see I have these. Uh, uh, tick values being printed for me. These are called axis ticks. Axis ticks. OK, I want to set this to off. I don't want to see it. So let me show you how to set it to off. OK, I want I don't want to see my axis ticks over here. So uh, if I'm not wrong. What changes can I do? Access ticks. Uh, any change that I could do? I hope I'm using the correct function and I'll just set this to off. Let's hope this works. OK. Fine, and you can see those thick values have now vanished. OK, fine, so you can do all of these changes over here. Fine, so over here we have used our. Uh, uh, service. Oh, we have used uh, our. Uh, you can say vision service. OK, uh, to perform uh, analysis over images. OK, fine, so in our first lab we used help of speech service. In our second lab we have used help of vision service. Fine. And any other analysis we wanted to do, we have detected objects. Huh? If you want to detect people, then what to do? Fine. 
so here instead of detecting all objects if you want to just detect people you can even do that okay uh, what i'll do is just not to waste any more time i'll just take my previous code and uh, using that code i'll show you uh, what happens if you want to detect people okay remember here the model the ai model can do mistakes while detecting people okay uh, and i will show you over here. there is there are high chances it will do mistakes because i can see a image like that where there are high chances to do mistakes so it's not that if azure has created a ai model it's uh, fully accurate no it, there are chances of some uh, miss predictions as well anyways let's go ahead i wanted to detect information about people so for every person or okay there is no need for confidence interval here when rest of the things are same on your of tags because we are just detecting people so i already know that it's a person so on your of tags i'll just save it in a different file rest of the thing is i'll keep it the same okay fine let's see i'll save the results in people.jpg all right let's run the code so now whatever people will be detected detected it will be stored in people.jpg you can see people. sorry person.jpg my mistake person.jpg is the right file name Okay, let me run it over here. And you will see that person.jpg file will be created. And here, okay, and here you can see it has done that mistake. I'll just check whether nothing is wrong over here. Uh, Obtain coordinates, object, sorry, person bounding box. Okay, not objects bounding box, person bounding box. Okay, I was using that previous uh, object. When I was doing object detection, I was using the code for that. That's why we had that issue. Right now, hopefully for person, we get the detected person. And uh, I'm telling you over here, there are high chances it will do misprediction. So it will detect the person, but apart from that, it might detect some other things that are not a person. Okay, let me check. I can see an image like that. That's why I have a feeling internally. Let me show you. Huh, you can see mispredictions already. Okay, I mean, yes, this was a person. This was a person in the taxi. Okay, but this was not a person. This was just the advertisement that was there on that taxi. Fine, this is a person, all right. But you can see this is misprediction. So it might do mispredictions as well. Okay, and fine, this is fine. Here we, we had a person, so it detected a person and all of that. Okay, fine. So as I mentioned, that the AI model can do misprediction. That's why still there is high demand for AI engineers who can create their own models. Okay, uh, because if you create own models, you can do much changes in the algorithm and all of that to avoid these mispredictions. But anyways, if you are not so technically sound, if you want to use these ready-made AI models, that's fine as well. Okay, but these ready-made AI models do mistakes. Okay, every now and then. That's why there's still high demand for people who create their own AI models. Okay, fine. So we have done this. Okay, that has detected objects and all of that. So fine, we have done two labs up till now. In the first lab, we tried to use speech service and perform speech translation. In the second lab, we tried to use image service and we, sorry, we tried to use vision service and we tried to perform analysis over the images. So I've showed you demo of two services already, right? First was speech and second was vision. Fine. Uh, after the break, we'll see more labs on different services. Up till now, I hope it's clear to everyone. If there is still any doubt, do let me know. Any doubt over these two labs, guys? Making sense to everyone? Yes or no, guys? Just let me know. Making sense? I understand if you are new to Python, the coding syntax would be slightly harder for you. Okay, uh, I do understand that. But apart from that, uh, once you understand Python, once you have knowledge of Python, you will see the it's very easy to use these models. So clear, guys? Yes or no? Making sense? Lakshman, then Ganesh, Anand, 
Rohit, everybody else. Okay. I hope it is making sense to you. If there is any doubt, please feel free to ask. Okay, I do not see a doubt in chat. It's fine. All right, so let's take a lunch break. After the lunch break, we'll be back and uh, we'll try to cover more labs then. Okay, so let's take a short lunch break. So we'll take a lunch break up till 2 p.m. and after 2 p.m. we'll be back. So let me set the timer. Lakshman says clear. Okay, perfect. Question. Okay, so, so we'll come back at 2 p.m. So let's take a lunch break till then. Okay, till then I'll just be on mute. After the lunch break, we'll come back and we'll see more laps. <laughs> 